Mr. Shimei, welcome to the Iconoclast one-to-one. -one. Thanks for joining me today. Thanks for inviting me. You were on the Iconoclast roundtable, and what you said had everybody pretty spellbound at the end of that. And we've had tremendous feedback from those who watched that show, and people really wanted to know more about what you were talking about. And obviously, the key um, message that you were you were giving was about the vaccine passports. So, what's going on? They're not vaccine passports. They are data passports. They are participation passports. But they are. There's no medical reason behind these. If I had come to you two years ago and said, "Here's what the government want to do. They want to give everybody a chip. They want to put all your medical data and all your financial data onto that chip. That will be your complete ID, and they can control you or shut you out of society from that. Ideally, they'd like to put a quantum tattoo so that they can remotely medicate you. That sounds absolutely." insane. That's the road that we are going down right now. This is about a financial reset because the fiat currency has failed like every other one has before and in order to keep the game going they need a new financial system. This is why everybody, no exceptions, has to get one of these passports. This is why there's the drive to get absolutely everybody vaccinated. It's for the new system. So what's this all been about then in terms of, you know, when they're calling it COVID and, you know, they're saying it's to keep people safe, etc. So has it had nothing to do with that at all? Nobody seems to be asking why. If you ask somebody, if you stand outside one of these bars and say, why are you using this passport? Nobody has an answer for why. It's certainly not a medical decision. If it doesn't stop you from getting it, it doesn't stop you from passing it on. That has been, the CDC have come out with that, Bill Gates have come out with that, Fauci has come out with that, Boris Johnson have come out, they've all come out and announced that. This clinical trial is nothing more than a treatment to reduce symptoms. At best, that's what it has the potential to do. So why would you need a passport to get into somewhere. You would, you would think that that would be linked to transmission, so that if this, if taking part in this clinical trial stopped transmission, then there would be a logic behind that. But there's absolutely no data to support that. It's not about me anything medical. This is an economic decision, not a medical decision. Why, why do they have to reset? Like, what, what's been going on behind the scenes or, you know, in the last, well, I know we obviously we had a crash in 2008. So has it been since then? Is this, is this what this is about? From 1971, we have been on a debt base. That's when the dollar came off. The dollar being the reserve currency came off, the gold standard. We entered into a debt-based economy. That has collapsed under its own weight. In 2019, um, September, there was a crisis in the repo market. It got more and more difficult. That could have been manipulated. There was liquidity pulled out, but that's, um, that's a different story. So it's an interesting timing though, isn't it? I mean, September 2019 and then the next thing we know. Yeah, you had the Bill Gates event 201 after that. It, it, this is a banking crisis. Every fiat currency in history, and there have been thousands, have returned to zero. This is where we are with the pound and the dollar have already lost over 99% of their value. They're just going to eradicate the other 1%. This is why the money is being printed. The money is being printed so that the central banks can give it out to the hedge fund companies, asset management firms. They're buying up all the actual assets while we are being paid to stay at home and say nothing. So the central bank, because what I've heard about obviously is this is a central bank digital currency. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between that then and a fiat currency? Like, if, if, this is a, if this is another reset, is it going to be the same story or is this going to be different? The central bank digital currency is the end game, okay. the, it, along with totalitarian control. In order to bring in a central bank digital currency, you need a digital ID. In order to bring in a digital ID, you need these passports. That will all be combined with a social credit system and a carbon credits system. Central bank digital currency has all the good aspects of um, a fiat currency for the government 
and nothing of what is good for us. The only benefit we have of a fiat currency, a fiat currency is basically it's backed by nothing. It's a currency because the government say it is so. What we gain from that is privacy. That's what we are going to lose when we move into a central bank digital currency and we are, they are going to have complete control over every aspect of our finances. They can dictate where in the economy that you can spend it. They can say that you can only spend it in essential um, goods or on rent. They can fine you at will. They have complete control over every aspect of your finances. Now, when you link that into a social credits concept, they can sanction you or reward you. This has already been trialled in, I think, a um, province in northern China, where you go from a triple A rating down to a D rating. Triple A, you get preference for jobs, you get your children get preference for schooling. D, they can take your qualifications off you. They can take your qualifications. They can take your qualifications. So they can literally say, no, we can just, just dismiss, dismiss anything you've actually achieved in your life. Yeah. Just like that. Mm -hmm. How close are we to this? We are very close to this because of compliance. Everybody has to buy into this. We have watched them move down, the, the propaganda move down the demographic. This started off with protect the vulnerable. Then it was the, it went down the age groups, pregnant women. Now it's children. Everybody, without exception, has to buy into this. This is the new financial system. Why, why, why do they need children? Children are earning, they're not, you know, so right now, why are they after them right now? Well, they need to condition them and they still need to be part, right now children would still need to be part of the financial system. They also need the data from the children. We are moving into AI technology. Mm -hmm. Data is the new gold. Energy is the new currency, data is the new gold. With the children, they have them from a young age, they can track their behaviours. AI is only as good as the information that goes into it. So if you are gathering all this data from the children, you can program AI under the Obama administration. This last day in office, there was a paper that backed up by MIT that 83% of all jobs earning $20 or less will be automated away by 2030. The future is AI. That, they that, need the data. So that's a for tremendous this. number of people, surely. Mm -hmm. So, what's going to happen to them? Universal basic income. So they will be sitting at home, getting a basic wage, but they won't be able to actually participate. Then is that what you're saying? Kind yes. of in, in terms of production, in terms of actually leading. There won't be needed. Production. There will not be needed. In with the way the technology is going, they're expected not to be needed. Okay, so it, this sounds absolutely terrifying and complete doom and gloom. It, is it inevitable? Are we, are we absolutely going to end up where these people who are organising this actually want us to go? If we continue to comply, yes. Um, the target is small to medium businesses because they account for 60% of all jobs and the target is the children. I don't know why anybody would get their child, let their child take part in this clinical trial. They're of virtually no risk. There's more risk of them drowning. Even if it was 100% safe and there was long-term data done, why would you let your child participate? There is a push right now, as I say, it's moved down the demographic. The push is now for children. I know in the north, um, it's only just the vaccination for children only just started. Already 25% just over 25% of 12 to 15 year olds have taken part. 56% of children aged 16 to 17 have taken part. They have to get them into the system. So in order for this new financial system, it's in order to participate in society right now, we have to have these passports. So how can they logically exclude children? How can children go to restaurants? And this is the coercion that they're going to use to get the children. The same coercion that they use for us. Mm -hmm. They're saying that if they want to go to teen discos, they're doing the exact same thing with children. They are going after the children right now. And I think for anybody who did take part, they, they were, I'm just, they were lied to about 
that it, it protected others. There is absolutely no... Well, and also that it was safe. I mean, you know. Yeah, because they, the, there was no, it's it short term studies, they could maybe say that it was safe, but they were told that it would, it would save others. It doesn't, it doesn't do, it's really, it's a selfish act to take. It doesn't do anything for anybody else. So if they were told from the beginning that doesn't, you're not really, at best it's treatment to reduce symptoms. You're not covered for the first two weeks, but you're not really covered until you get the second one and it wanes after six months. So you're actually only covered for four months. This is the information we know right now. Yeah. Why would you be getting your children it? If you know that at best it only protects you for four months, why would you be getting your children? It's simple. You are, let's be real, parents. It's so that your children can participate in society. That is the only reason that you are taking them in and getting them it. You're taking a risk so that your children could participate in society. We have to have these passports to participate in society. The next move is that we have to have a central bank digital currency wallet in order to participate in the financial society. So what do we do? What, what does the ordinary person in the street do? What does a, a small business owner do? What, what, we need some solutions here because obviously that, that is pretty dystopian. For a small to medium business owner, what they need to do is absolutely do not comply. These, their threat is unlawful fines. Their business will be gone anyway. They're, they're under attack. These businesses have, have to be eradicated in order for the new system to come into place because they need you dependent on the state for the social credits, the carbon So you're credits. saying that even if they do comply now, essentially they're going to try and find another way to squeeze them out? Well, they have reduced their footfall. It started with nobody could participate in society. Then it was, if you comply, you can participate in society. Then it's going to be, if you adopt central bank digital currency, you can participate in society. And then it's going to be social and carbon credits. So for these businesses, they could just decide to, I mean, I think it was after World War I, taxes were 90%. They can just go straight into their account and tax them 90%, whatever they want. They have complete control, but they want them gone because they want to eradicate any independence. So they need to not comply. Those businesses, especially restaurants, they're dependent. They have a small profit margin. They're dependent on footfall. The government is dictating who their customer base is. That they're, they're telling them that it's unlawful, which is that is not true. It's a mandate to serve a particular portion of Because so, a lot of society. people say... You know the excuses. So you're saying, you know, well, why why are businesses participating? Or if you were sorry, if you were to stand outside and ask them, well, why are you why have you implemented this? Then, you know, they will say we have to. It's the law. So that's not that's not true. No, it's not the law. It's not the law. It will be challenged. The challenges are being held back. But no, it's not the law. <sighs> they are complying. Everything is based on compliance. These fines are not lawful. They're being challenged right now. So, but in the meantime, your business is being wiped out. They have subsidised these businesses in order to create a loyalty to the government rather than to the customer. They won't survive the other side. It's up to people f to, if, for me, if a business um, puts out that they, you have to have a passport to enter the business. I'm not showing my papers. I know how this works in history. I am not showing my papers to enter a business because there's absolutely no reason for you to need to know my vaccine status for me to enter your business. It's not a medical decision and I know how it's going to work out economically. But, but particularly because it's been shown that it's not stopping transmission. I, th I think that, that, and it's such a good point, you know, that people are taking it actually to protect themselves, maybe at best. Mm -hmm. And the reality, really, and even people who are delighted with a, a what's it called, a, like a recovered certificate, they still have to show their medical information. So they're part, they're, they're still part, so they kind of feel, oh, well, I haven't had the vaccine, so I'm kind of, kind of cleverly avoided that, but they're still in, so the, the reality is it's, it's going to move on probably from vaccines and it's going to be something else. What happens when that runs, when your nine months runs out? Mm. This is coming for everybody. You might be going ahead and going to the restaurants right now because your 
passport is green. It's a matter of time before everybody's passport turns from green to red. For various different reasons, it could be they could decide if you um, don't that you have mental health issues, and if you don't take a particular medication, or if you that you have to take statins, anything, in order to participate in society. The new normal is a continual changing of the goalposts. Mm -hmm. So you will never be fully in. It is like the constant updates that you get in the computer. You're never completely updated. Same with your phone. It always happens at the wrong time as well, doesn't it? Yeah. Just as you're about to do something, that, and it goes on and you're stuck. And then you're stuck. You can't do anything. You're literally waiting. Well, you could be about to go out to eight. And you're... Because if you look at um, under the WF, we have right now, we have the Internet of Things. They want to move into the Internet of Bodies. The Internet of Things is so your watch connects with your phone, your phone connects with your fridge, your TV. They Eating want system, you mm -hmm. want it, like everything. They want it to be Internet of Bodies, where you connect via, in their words, an, in, an ingestible, a wearable, or an injectable. This is their words, so that you connect to all of this. This is all data that's available. Go and look at the WEF website, scroll down, Fourth Industrial Revolution. They want to blur the line between um, human and technology robots. I, I actually mentioned the Fourth Industrial Revolution to someone recently, and I said, you know, I'm, I'm not a Luddite. <laughs> that was what I said. I said, you know, and he said, just because you can do it doesn't mean you should. Oh, no. And I, I just thought that was, like, it, we, I kind of really hit home. I was like, absolutely. We kind of feel like it's inevitable, doesn't it, that we have this uh, progress, technological progress, and we're going to be swept along with it, and we, we can't do anything. But we're not actually designed for this, are we? No. We, I, I was born before the internet. <laughs> I didn't have a phone. I think I was born I think... before you, so that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I think I didn't have a phone. Um, 20 years ago, maybe, I didn't have a phone. This, this is what's wrong. The law hasn't ca caught up with technology, and it's getting ahead of itself. And you have these billionaires trying to take over control of the people and all of the wealth. That's what's right, happening right now. Like, while we're sitting at home, there's a wealth heist going on. Everything is being bought up around us. And meanwhile, what we have is being inflated away. So in terms of the financial reset, because the financial reset's coming anyway, isn't it? I mean, that's it. Well, it's the, the, the only solution so to COVID. The only solution to COVID is um, a new financial economy. <laughs> so, so money's going to solve a vi the problem yeah. of a virus. Mm -hmm. But the, as you were saying, the, the, the fiat currency, it's come, to, it's come to the end. I think it was you we have talked to before, and you know you were saying it's been on life support, and now it's the, the plug is... is well, the body's twitching at yeah, this stage. You know, it's, it's, it's coming to the end stage. So if we don't participate then in the passport system, this medical apartheid essentially, mm -hmm. um, what can, what can we do then financially? Like, what, what, what's going to happen? You will have to um, buy into it to a degree. Um, it's better to have as much autonomy as you can over your finances. For me, it's precious metals. Every time the system has been reset, like 4,800 times, it's always been to gold. My guess would be that the globalist thinking started around it, it, 1944 with the Bretton Woods Agreement when all currencies were pegged to the dollar. Mm -hmm. That linked everything together. That has to remain. So what I would say is the IMF came out with the SDR, I think in 1969, just before the dollar um, look, came off the gold standard. This is a basket of currencies. The, the, currently, I think it's the pound, the yuan, the yen, um, the euro, and the dollar. Anything can be added into that basket. I would say there's a strong likelihood that they would add gold into that basket to tether it. And that will be the transition from the dollar being the reserve currency, because it right now would have the land share, into the digital yuan. In terms of central bank digital currency, it's already out in 
China, they've already put it out. But are other, it. other countries investing in that, or is it just you more... You have Bitcoin, you have Fedcoin, yeah. If you look, every single country, um, Euro, they're all moving into a central bank digital currency. The new currency has to be a digital one. Because of the age we live in, it has to be a digital one. But with the level of control, it's actually terrifying. So, so are you saying, OK, we're going, it looks like it's going digital anyway, because we've obviously there's cryptos have come in, so the technology is there. Um, and obviously technology is only going to Im <laughs> progress even further you know, mm -hmm. as we go into this. Is it that we're still going to be with a digital currency with gold and silver precious metals, things like that in there. But if we didn't participate in the passport system, it would still be that, but with less control from, from government and central bank. Is that what you're saying? With, um, with the precious metals, you can operate outside the system with precious metals. It has been a currency for years. A, a lot of people would put a lot of credence into um, cryptocurrencies. For me, I, I do own them. Um, there's some that have functionality and but Bitcoin while it has a mechanism to control quantity it doesn't have a mechanism to control its value it's very volatile it's not functioning as a currency right now and it is almost like a fiat currency mm. in that um, it's backed by faith the enemy of all cryptocurrencies is regulation and the SEC are working, they have Gary Gensler at the SEC working on that, um, who, if you watch his MIT lectures, he's very well versed in crypto. Right. So that's almost like, in a way, they're quite happy then for people to go into cryptos because it could be corralling people into something that initially, that now is, although it's not regulated now, mm -hmm. if that comes in, it's like the, the gate's going to close in behind them. Is that It's a speculative coming? asset. Um, the, the dot-com bubble all over again. Will there be ones that survive and thrive out of it? Absolutely. Is blockchain the future? Absolutely. They have complete transparency over every aspect of your life. They will, with your digital ID, they can put you onto a blockchain on the internet. They can, they have full view of everything that you do. So these, there will be a lot that will survive with the cryptocurrencies, if you reduce the custodians, it's easier to regulate. And a lot of people are using the exchanges. If, what was it, Coinbase mm. were taken up. There was a court case against Coinbase and they relented and give up 20 or 30,000 accounts of their most prolific users. The IRS have oh, wow. requested that you, you have to fill in if you have traded in cryptocurrencies. If you fail to, to tick that box, that's a felony charge. So how do we know how they're going to regulate that? that? They can just tax you at 90% for any capital gains. And then you also have the issue of unrealized capital gains. The only thing that's, I think it's back old school, precious metals are, they're, they're safe. They've always been a hedge against inflation. Russia can back their currency right now. They have 23% of their reserves are in precious metals. China have upped their, I think they've increased by 60% recently. They have a huge amount of precious metals. You have Brazil, you, the IMF own like 2,800 tons of gold. The central banks hold gold. They, there's a reason, for me, there's a reason they, why I could see want. them tethering it to gold okay. again. Okay. So, from what it sounds like, don't participate in the passport system if you're a customer or a business. Keep your kids away from participating in the system. Precious metals seem to be, you know, a way of um, certainly, it's not necessarily an investment, but maybe it's, it's like a secure... And precious metals are not an investment. They're um, a way to protect your wealth. In terms of what you can do, first thing you need to think of is what future do you want for your children? Because you might think you're okay now, but this is the future that you are building. You're building your own prison. You're building a prison for your children. It's a series of dominoes. Take out those dominoes. It starts with vaccine passports. 
They're not vaccine passports. They're data passports. Data is the new gold and energy is the new currency. So take that out and everything falls apart. And the economy, honestly, the economy is failing anyway. There's, they're trying to put in this new financial system. Either way, you need to prepare. You need to ask yourself, are you prepared? Financially, are you prepared? That was the only thing that was addressed through the whole collapse. They only addressed the financial aspect. You were given money to stay at home. Are you prepared spiritually, emotionally, physically, mentally? Because this is coming. There is no going back to the old world. This is the new world that we're going to be living in if they succeed. I don't feel that they will succeed. Maybe that's optimistic. I like your optimism. Well, when freedoms are reduced, eroded away, empires tend to collapse. That's the Roman, Ottoman, French empire. That's why they collapsed. So I do have hope, but protect your children. Do not let your children participate in this passport system. Know that if you do, for the sake of going to a restaurant, that you are leading them into a social credits system and slavery. The consumer economy has failed. We're moving into a credits economy where you, now the rich can buy credits, but that's the world that you're going to be putting your children into a credit system where they will have to work off the debt that has been accrued. So it, it's like they've waged war against us. We are at war. Australia knows it. New Zealand knows it. Austria knows it. They're all out on the streets. We absolutely are at war. In a war situation, there is collateral damage. That's where we are standing with these injuries and deaths from this clinical trial that you, they're being completely censored. That information is being completely censored because it's essential to get us all on board. As I say, no exception. So we are in a war situation against a takeover, a globalist takeover from NGOs, non-government organisations, the WEF, IMF, UN, all of them. These billionaires and technology companies are dictating the future of humanity. And if we don't stand up, we are running out of time and we need to stand up and it's simple. In a war situation, men have been frontline at war, losing their lives. All we have to do is say, no. That's all we have to do, just mass non-compliance. That is, the, the solution to this is mass non-compliance. Well, I, I heard that expression last year for the first time in terms of the context of this, and, and I really didn't get it, I have to say, but, but he really hearing you know, what you're talking about and the date really where we're heading if, if enough people comply you know and the reality now is we are the majority so if enough people stop complying and say no surely there's enough of us to, to turn this around the people have the power and they know that they have been controlling us they, they know our psychology unfortunately we are not as unique <laughs> as we think we are. You'll be very aware of that. <laughs> We're not that complicated. <laughs> yeah. So they have, they have this knowledge at their disposal and they're using it against us. What they don't seem to budget in is human spirit, intuition and spirituality. And that's what we need to use. We need to look at our children and think, my job is to protect you. This is the world that we want to build for our children. Build that world. Don't wait for somebody else to build it. And there's no going back, is there? I mean, there's the, it's the gone. No, normal as we knew it is, is gone, but the new normal, that's, that seems like it's down to us. No matter what, there's no going back. It's gone. All that they're trying to do right now is keep the system alive long enough in order to bring in the new system. They're not trying to fix anything. They're not trying to bring anything back. They're telling you the build back better. What does that tell you? You have to destroy before. That's why this, the economy is being systematically collapsed. Build back better. It's their version of better. Their version is 
the social credits, the carbon credits. They want you, they're moving away from fear into guilt, that we are responsible for the world breaking down and dying. I'm not worried about the world. I'm worried about the people on it. If these philanthropists, which seems to be a code word for um, psychopath, <laughs> if they genuinely cared, there's millions of people starving to death every day. Do something about that. Clean water, sanitation, yeah. I mean all of those things have been proven to... They don't, you know. they're, they're interested in control and wealth. That's all that they're interested in. They don't care about anybody else on the planet. They do not care about the planet. They care about wealth and control. So someone watching this who's sitting here, you know, absolutely mesmerised by this information because it's the first time maybe they've heard it. What would you suggest they go out and do now? For me, this is going to be won by communities. So find people that are like-minded. That's going to keep your confidence up. Do not give in and do not give up. If you give up now, you are given, if we don't fight this now, we are giving our children twice the battle. It has, it has to be fought now. The quicker that we do this, the easier it is to get out of. So find your communities, find people, find your support network. And they are out there. They absolutely are out there. People think that they are alone. They're not alone. You're not crazy. Your intuition is correct. You need to get out there and meet with these people. We need to simply say no. Do not let your children participate in it. They are going for your children now. That's the, that's the final demographic. We have been saying, the people that are aware have been saying it from the start. And here we are. We're now down, I think the Taoiseach has, he's okay at it for five to 11 year olds. Or he, he's on board with five to 11 year olds. I, I think he said something like, you know, well, well they're asking for it. They, they, they want it. So we should be listening to our five year olds. <laughs> what? They're going to be coerced into taking it as well. I mean, if pest, if pest of power, power is good, you know, but my yeah. goodness. If they want, if you want to participate in society, you have to get it. That's their narrative. No, the society has been broke down anyway. So st withdraw your participation now. Let these businesses lobby government and say, we're going to have to close down. Let everything fall apart now. We have a better chance now of letting things, they're going to fall apart anyway. It has happened time and time again. If you want to understand anything, look at history. We have been here before. But this new reset is absolutely ter terrifying. This new financial system is one of totalitarian control over every aspect of your life. Is that what you want for your children? You might be okay. I mean, at my age, it's going to be a slow creep into it. It's this, what, what I'm talking about isn't going to, it's, it's not going to be next week, next month, next year. There'll be little things all the time. The same move away from the few weeks to flatten the curve, to lockdowns, to um, passports. It's going to be the same move into the social credit system. It'll be incentives first, and then it'll, they'll move into if you don't. Then punishment. And then ultimately the carbon credits because energy is the best functioning currency. That's why they're moving into carbon credits. So with that, we need to put our energy into the future that we want to create. And if that's the currency, then we actually control it. It always has been the currency. They've printed paper and got us to work for paper under the fiction of paper for so long. We have been in a slave system for so long. <laughs> time to get out. Without time to get out of it. Time to realize that we are spiritual beings having a human experience and stop letting ourselves be distracted from that. Melissa, thank you so much for joining me today and uh, I wish you all the best of luck. Thank you.